Father Roach still looks rather pallid. What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmund's? Not regularly, if at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? A sturdy construction I'm in, no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. At least he must have plenty of eggs to eat. Awful creatures, those hens. Why do you say that? Having hens is <laughs> amazing. Not that I would know, but I would like to. I'd love eggs. Do you know that young girl we saw? No, but I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. A good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there were others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. I wouldn't entrust a young woman in their company. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. The Devil mustn't have been happy. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like hens, Father? I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hen's eggs. They smell of sulfur when rotten. So don't eat them when they're rotten. What more can you tell me of these primitive folk? Godless people, Miss Bateman. Don't concern yourself with them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. I can't wait to cross their path. You mentioned that Mrs. De Plancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. De Plancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. Maybe if I tickle her palm with some gold. What is your favorite of Shakespeare's works? A very difficult question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? A fine quote. Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I'm rather fond of this colour. Perhaps Mr. Shoulder and I share similar taste. I mean, it's a nice cottage, I have to say. A sweet little hen, plump and well-groomed. The hens look <laughs> look like they're we wearing, like, high platform sandals. <laughs> a sweet little... A fearsome-looking beast. Here, chuk chuk chuk. Don't encourage them. Hey, can you... Can you, like, step aside for a second? I'm having a moment with the hens. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. I will pick up the chicken. <laughs> Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're no fun. Well, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> a pair of thick woolen trousers. Can we play pick up the chicken again? Yes. Buck. <laughs> Buck. <laughs> this is so cute. What good fun. What good fun they had back in the day. <laughs> they picked up chickens. So much fun. That glove looks familiar. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. I think it does. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Why didn't he come inside to see me? It's a good question. A fine white... I found it in the... I guess we'll never know, since he's probably dead inside. On the inside of the house. He... I don't know about his emotional state. A woolen undergarment. Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood neatly beneath this small lean-to. Very neat and tidy. 
of this you care about. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go inside. No sign of life. None. Because he's dead. The window is nice <laughs> and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? No. You go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. And what a Shakespeare dork the father is. But we do know that Mr. Shoulder was outside last night, because it's his clothing, and it's probably drying out because he was out in the rain last night. I've no desire to- There's not much for us to do here, except pick up- chickens which yes thank you but also what else is there to do can I break into his house I don't wish to beat my way in that's a peculiar I can give this glove back to Mr. Shoulder when I find him stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think... It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. I've no... The trousers feel damp. Freshly hung or still wet from last night's rain. slightly damp. Mr. Shoulder must have dropped the matching glove last night. What was he doing in the alley? Rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. The window is much too I'm rather fond of this colour. I'm rather fond of perhaps Mr. Come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. Well, he really doesn't seem to be home. No sign of any move. So I'll just pick up the hen again. Hen again. Buck. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? <laughs> she really is. She makes the cutest buck. And then I'll be on my way. Your loss, Mr. Shoulder. As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. I should go and meet him at the station. I forgot all about Kenneth. 
Money. <laughs> Finally. Margaret's lookout. Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is or was. It's a good question. Hmm. Kenneth. Money, 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 money. This appears to Miss the Plan C. Hello. Good day. Good day. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. Um, I need to know. Father Roach <laughs> seems rather under the weather, don't you think? Father Roach? The man is as fit as a lad half his age. What makes you say that? I found him in the woods in a state of considerable distress. Oh my! This is very worrying. I must check on him later. I had no idea. Hmm. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. I mean, <laughs> I totally betrayed his trust. Oops. But it is what it is. The sweet old lady will take care of him. Good day. Yes? Are you sure you don't- Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. Oh. Aye. Kenneth. Kenneth, did you bring my money? Where is Kenneth? He was supposed to wait for me at the station. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. I fear that he's the fresh grave that we saw at the church. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find... He lives... You'll... Thank... I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I... I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Farewell for now. Ta-ra! Ta-ra. Kenneth. Was he taken away already? Hey, Cyril. Cyril is no doubt keeping watch on any potential new arrivals from the railway station. <laughs> He's poised and ready to yell at any newcomers. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. It is no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. Because I really don't have any money, Kenneth. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? Fair enough. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. 
You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. Tell Oh, Cyril. I will get through to you at some point. Where is my crate? I have There's nothing else I wish to- I mean, where is Kenneth, I meant to say. <laughs> Oops. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. He looks a little chirpier than your average Bewley resident. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. He seems quite, quite excited with outsiders. I mean, I guess Cyril hates this guy. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? He seems harmless is usually a trap. But you know what? This is how I'm gonna play it. Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbor. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. I really want my box. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Fantastic. Really good job, mate. Really good job. So when exactly does he deliver post if he's gone for a few days? Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye. Funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No. Not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station, which brings us lovely new faces. Yes, lovely new faces and skin to wear, I, I'm sure. <laughs> this guy is getting less and less harmless by the second. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here. But we need new blood. Oh, I hope no. that some of you visitors will actually <laughs> stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for an ale right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait, do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? 
Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anyway. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. So what, you're just gonna stand here for a couple of days or however long he's gone? He looks a little chirpier than your average Bewley resident. The man is standing right there. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Well, not while I'm being watched by Mr. Long. The postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. Oh, I really want my crate. All right, Mr. Long, I'll have to distract you somehow. What about with a shiny object? Is this yours? No, not mine. Is this yours? Oh, that's beautiful. I'd never be allowed such a pretty thing. All right. Whose could it be? Maybe the blacksmith or the old lady at the church might know? Is this yours? No, not mine. Excuse me, I found this necklace inside the church. Is it yours? No, pet. Perhaps someone left it behind yesterday. You keep hold of it for now. I'll ask around at the next service. Are you sure? I trust you. All right. Could you trust one of these cakes to me? It's Mr. Stanley. He has the serious and worn-out facial... What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him, just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. I mean, it's not like the rooms are <laughs> very seriously in demand right now. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr. Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the Barrow? No, sorry. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. It's interesting, because we've been to your mother's grave. And I hope you ain't lying. I found Mr. Shoulder's home, thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful! So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, did old Leonard apologize for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye. It's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of value as a deposit. I'll give it back to you at the end of when it will be time to pay the piper. Goodbye. See you soon. What do I have of value? I mean, my, my handkerchief is totaled. Maybe the silver necklace that isn't mine. This'll do. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? 
Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. I mean, it's five o'clock. Probably there. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Most agreeable. If anything, that clears your head a little more. Leaves more room for creative thought. Nothing changed in here. It's a Wally. This young fellow looks miserable. He brings misery to wherever he goes. A humble lo- Good day. Are you sure you don't know anything about Hobbs Barrow? I would very much like to find it. No. Goodbye. Nobody home. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. So how can I get to Mr. Price? Who can tell me how to get to Mr. Price? Hello? Oh. It, are you sure? Not like a wheelbarrow. Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mick. Good day. Hello, Mick. Are you sure? I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, man. Good day to you, sir. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I don't expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Go on then, lass. Follow me. I think I know what we have to do. So then, he turns around and says, why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, ah, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> right? I'm getting to... I'm starting to thaw that icy heart of yours. Thanks again for the air. Now leave. I will, but I will also bring Hen Henry over here for a drink, and then you guys are really going to start battling it out. So how do I convince you to leave your God-given mission? Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. Success. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! <laughs> I was waiting for it. That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. It will.
Cool. Now time to get my crate. And we are two beers deep. <laughs> He's currently debating the merits of the railway station at the inn. This house looks pleasant. Locked, as expected. I need to get inside without attracting too much attention. But how can I? Royal Mail. This must be the local. I can't really break a window. How can I get inside? Can I dig my my, my way under the door? Hmm. I don't think battering the door down is the solution here. I don't wish to draw too much attention. Well, I don't really know how I'm gonna get my box. So let's visit some of the other areas, like the little stream that had Wally and Jane, I think? Is it here? Yes. She has a puckish little face. Now with Wally gone, maybe she's going to be more forthcoming. She has a pu- Wally took Myrtle! Oh, the Pardon? bastard. He took her and ran off. I hate him! Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes! My favorite! Mommy made her for me. She's so beautiful! Wally is the worst brother in the whole world! He is. He's pretty terrible. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favorite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. the Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes! But don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Please find Myrtle first, I miss her. I will. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. He deserves it. Where do you live? I hope maybe... Or maybe poor... I'm going to... Goodbye. Bye, miss. Damp ragdolls have been... Oh, Wally. What a terrible brother. But he's only envious, as he just wants some attention. That's why he's so horrible. Good day. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't know what she can be like. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells, you'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that door back. That will just bring bad luck for all of us. Goodbye. Of course I'll bring it back. You created this mess, Wally. The road disappears over... So not this way. I'm not sure if these are poisonous. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. 
Indeed. This is different. I'd better not touch them. It looks like something has been... Thomasina! Please stop leaving your toys lying about the place! What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. It's another flashback time. Man, we were not doing bad. Look at this place. Servants and a manicured garden. And look at this building. Not bad at all. Miss Bowles looks cross. What's for supper, madame? It'll be nothing but a glass of water and a worm if you don't fetch your dolly right this instant. I doubt it. I live here, Mrs. Bowes. <laughs> because boobies. Is that why you're giggling? Hello. It's the gateway to the fairy kingdom. I see. Hello, fairies. So that a circle of mushrooms is a gateway. Hello, fairy. Gateway drug. That's what it is. <laughs> there she is. There you are, Josephine. I won't let the foxes eat you. Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's a gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? I didn't know my father was Mr. Spock. Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? Ew. <laughs> this must be Jane's ragdoll. Wow, that is a lot of worms. Look at it writhing away. Hmm. You're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. <laughs> because my assistant is such a worm? <laughs> I've already taken one. Okay, I got a worm. There is something somewhat unsettling about its appearance. A little bit, yeah. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. Maybe it's Jane's hairpin. <laughs> Maybe you should ask her. A sharp hairpin could be useful. It's Jane's creepy ragdoll. All right, Jane. It's little Kenneth. Little Kenneth. All right, Jane, I brought you your creepy doll back, but I want to make sure that it's okay that I take the hairpin with me, because it's probably yours. I'm not sure they would be interested. It's probably it's not yours. Okay. Ooh, you know what's even better? I'm going to show Wally the doll first. Yes. Hey, Wally, check this out. I'm not sure they would be interested. I think he'd be very There's interested. There's nothing else I... Uh, I guess not. I'm not sure they would be- Where did you get this hairpin, Wally? Tell me! I present to you... Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! 
Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! Come back! It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. I know, right? Just take her dolls. Like, take the remaining two dolls and be done with it. <laughs> Keep them as hostages. They aren't mine to take. Damp ragdoll. God damn it. The delicate flowers. Jane, where did you go? Hey! Well, at least I hope she's leading me to Hobbs Barrow. <laughs> Jane? Jane! Get out of there! Don't make me come in! I don't think you Fine. can. Curses! The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> I'm gonna put Ken <laughs> Kenneth in there. Let's see. That won't make the entrance any bigger. Okay, I need to make the entrance bigger. I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself. Clod by clod. That should do it. Jane! Well, this is some nightmare fuel. Being stuck in the earth. Jane? Jane? It's pitch black down there. And I don't have much to... Oh, I do have a match. That's pretty good. Curses. The useless thing blew out. Well, that's pretty useless, yeah. Is it... Do I hear flies buzzing? Because that's not a good sign. Jane? Jane! Come out this instant! I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Jane? Jane? Maybe I can get a candle. <laughs> Do you guys have a candle on you or something? Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Ta-ta. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, can I get this lantern? I have one just like... I can't think of anything... No. Can I please have a new candle for my room? I'll go upstairs and replace it this evening. Can I have one now? It's not dark yet, Miss Bateman. I... never mind. Goodbye. See you soon. How annoying. <laughs> hmm. Where can I find another light source? You guys seem to be having fun. I'll leave Cyril. I must say, last night... The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. That candle didn't last long. Maybe the church will give me a candle? Since Stanley's a little stingy with the candle situation. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. I haven't seen Father... since... I haven't seen Father in a long time. I've no time for such things. Are there any candles in here? Like these big ones? That I cannot take? Well, I don't have any idea except... You know, this this is the only light source here, and I can't take it. So I guess that's going to be a little later, but I do have a hairpin. And I do have a locked door situation. And since all adventure game characters are expert locksmiths, this should work. Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. Success? A 
I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Oh, finally. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Miss Bateman, I beg for your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London and I cannot join you in Bewley. I've packed your usual equipment and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth. The Letdown. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Hicks. Specimen trays. Shovels. Oh, my chisel. I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still... I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. Indeed. Penniless and assistantless. I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation tools. It's my crate of excavation tools. So what did I get? A chisel? I've had this for years. It's looking like it could break at any moment, really. I need paraffin to fuel my lantern. Maybe the, um, the smith can loan me some oil, some lantern oil? Good day. Yes? I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? Zero. None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. What can I- Surprise- Thanks for your t- Aye. Okay. Law of surprise. Do you want a worm? Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier- I think I know what I can trade for it. Was it here? The more stre- No, it was the other place. It's because he's a fossil lover. I know where there's another fossil. And I got a chisel with me that will break after I <laughs> chisel the fossil. And then he's gonna give me some lantern oil. Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. An exceptional ammonite fossil. I do have to say, that is pretty cool. I wonder if the father is upset with me that I spilled the beans on his illness. He probably will be. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. I still have my chisel, surprisingly. I've had this for years. An opened tin of paraffin. There's still quite a bit left inside. Oh. Hey, that's nice.
My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Is it lit already? It looks like the same. Hmm. All right. Let's inspect that hole that Jane went in again. Creepy little child. Where was she? This way. Right. Let's put this lantern to good use. I do not like that sound of buzzing flies. Something dead is in here. Jane, come out at once. Goodness me! Jane! Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. Fantastic help, indeed. Thanks for... thanks for this. I shan't be visiting the badges again. I was lucky to escape intact. Indeed. They can be quite vicious. The crow is back. Look at it writhing away. I've already taken one. Well, it makes sense that a bird would be uh, here with all the delicious looking worms. Hmm. As I trudge through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance, the townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. The gate opens out into a vast tilled field The gate... I have no desire to wander the furrows. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well... Yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh. I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. 
You couldn't make out a word, like. That must have been hard. You lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barra, dragging timber him with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock, even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. My wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. How can I change your mind? Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. But I do. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? I have some letters. You wish to see- I can't- What proof? Thanks for your time. Ta ta now. Let me just walk around a bit and then I'll show you the letters. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. This is not mine to take. It's an ominous looking tree. Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. This must be a reference to Broken Sword and the goat puzzle. <laughs> the angry goat puzzle. What a wild looking thing! Very cute. A nice reference. I have this as proof. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Leonard making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this, but yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you! Any road, once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. 
After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Sit on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. Oh, finally we're gonna see the Barrow. He's doing well to be maintaining all this land at his advanced stage. I think he can hear you, <laughs> since you said it out loud. Hello there, sir. Yes? That's quite an intimidating goat you own. <laughs> the old girl does a better job of protecting this farm than any hound would. <laughs> She still produces a lot of milk for us, so we forgive her temper. Thanks for your time. Ta-ra now. I probably should have brought my umbrella. Perhaps I could take a closer look. A R. R. <laughs> a R. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. Oh, I missed Hobbs that. Hobbs Barrow. Oh, finally. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? That smell. Earthy and sweet. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Thank you, Daddy. Well, I see a little trowel here. Daddy told me I should always carry a trowel on my excavations. So let's go grab this one, and I see a mound on the left-hand side. Oh, I see multiple. Now I'm ready. Multiple mounds. Nothing here. What about this? No treasures here. Hmm, where could they be? Aha! Daddy, I found the treasure! Look! Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, alright? I will, Daddy. I promise. Good memories. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Can't I just, you know, have a taste? In good time. In good time. All right. Well, I guess we have to leave it for now. I'll be back. Someone has carved the letters AR into the stone. getting much darker. Do we still have the lantern? 
Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. I shouldn't disturb him at this late hour. What about his goat? I don't wish to risk waking it up. Indeed. Now it sleeps, it is peaceful. And it's foggy again. Is it foggy every night? It's late. I should really... We'll get some sleep soon. It's late. Just want to talk to Stanley again. Oh, a lively evening. Good evening, Miss... Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. Tis truly a beauty. You're most welcome. You're welcome. Do not go to the little river. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Who else is here? Good evening, gentlemen. What are you gonna do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming! I am gonna knock his bloody block off! <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off! You are the man. Charming. It's just making conversation, dude. Good evening, sir. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I'll leave you to it. What is he doing? Is that a knife? Oh, okay. He's doing the knife finger thing. Oh, here's Herbert. I don't wish to wake him up. It's Herbert, the local stray. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here? Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. Will do, Cyril. He seems even more wound up than usual. Good old Cyril. I must say, last night... Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman? There are stories connected to that place. Yes, yeah, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far, there's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Well, I'll just have a drink and then go to bed. A mug of your finest ale, please. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Goodbye. See you soon. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe you'll share more information, or maybe you're just gonna pass out on the table again. One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. 
I'm sorry, I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. Are we relying on drunken memory now? To Leonard's shoulder. Whatever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sites steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She went out but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. Used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. she gets get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected as a favourite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. 
the frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Oh, no. Sing the song. <laughs> no. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> oh, God. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! 